Welcome to Electron Line. Here's our next example of how to find the forces on a truss. We also will find, find which beams or which members are under compression, which members are under tension. We also want to find the support forces. Let's start with that. Let's find the support forces. What we're going to do is we're going to pick the pivot point right here at A. The sum of all the torques add up to zero and relative to A, of course, so let's go sub A. And the first one is caused by F sub D, which is a counterclockwise direction. That's a positive force. So F sub D times the distance from the line of action force to the pivot point, which is 1.5 meters. Here we have a force that acts such that we have a clockwise torque. That's a minus 2,400 newtons multiplied times the distance from the line of action of force to the pivot point, which is a total of 3.6 meters. And then we have plus an 1800 newton force, which gives us a counterclockwise torque, 1800 newton force, multiplied times the distance from the line of action of force to the pivot point, which is a total of two meters. Which means that F sub D is equal to, uh, let's see, that would be a positive, because we're gonna move that across, so 2400 newtons times 3.6 meters minus 1800 newtons times 2 meters and the whole thing divided by 1.5 meters. All right, 2400 times 3.6 minus 3600 and divide by 1.5 and we get 3360 newtons. Now we need to find F at A, the support force. And again, I assume here that we'll probably end up with a force in the opposite direction. Let's find out. The sum of the forces in the y direction add up to zero. We have F sub A, that's a positive force assumed here by the arrow. We have plus F sub D, which is 3,360 newtons. And now we have minus 2,400 newtons which means that F sub A is going to be equal to 2,400 newtons minus 3,360 newtons. And that looks like, uh, well, let me get a calculator. Just make sure I get the right value here. 2,400 minus 3,360, yep, minus 960. Which means that F sub A is actually in a negative direction, and we'll get to that later. Now let's figure out which of these members are under compression and which ones are under tension. Notice that we have a force pulling down in this direction. If this connection wasn't there, this beam would simply swing around like this due to the force. This beam is preventing that from happening. If this was not connected there, the beam would simply uh, go this way. Since it's connected here, this beam will prevent that from happening, which means this beam is under tension. Notice that we have a support force going in this direction. It's pushing up against that. Since this beam is in tension, let's draw the forces here. If it's in tension, that means that the, the beam pulls in this direction over here, pulls in this direction over here, which means that we have a force in this direction causing compression on this beam, so this beam is under compression, which means that we have a force pushing back this way and a force pushing back this way. Notice we now realize that force at A is not a force in this direction, but force in this direction. It's pulling this beam this way. If this was not connected, this beam would rotate like this. However, it's connected to this beam, which prevents this beam from coming down. That means that this beam is under tension. If we look at here, we notice that this beam is being pulled this way. This beam is preventing this beam from going in that direction, so this beam is under compression. And if this beam is under compression, then this beam must be under compression as well. Because this beam is pushing against this connection here, which means the beam has to push in the connection to the connection in the opposite direction to make sure the forces there add up to zero. We've now determined the compression and tension on all the beams in our truss. We now go ahead 
and we'll find the magnitude of the forces on the, on the members. Let's start with this connection right here. Notice we can compare this connection to this triangle. I'm going to set up a triangular shape. Here's my triangle. This distance here is 2.1 meters. This distance here, well, we'll find it in just a moment. This distance here is 2 meters. So using Pythagorean theorem, we get 2.1 squared plus 4, take the square root, 2.9 meters for the diagonal element here. We compare that now to the three forces here. We now draw a force diagram. In this direction we have a force of 2,400 newtons. Here we have a force in this direction. We call that the force from, from C to D. And then we have a force going in that direction. And we call that the force from B to C. Which means, since we have a right triangle here, we have a relationship on the shape, we can then say that 2,400 newtons, 2,400 newtons, divided by the length of 2 meters is equal to BC, divided by the length of 2.9 meters, which is equal to CD, divided by the length of 2.1 meters. Which means that BC is equal to 2,400 newtons, divided by 2 times 2.9, and CD is equal to 2,400 newtons divided by 2 times 2.1. All right, let's see what we get. That's 1,200 divided by 1 times 2.9, 3480, 3,480 newtons. And here we get 1,200 times 2.1, that's 2,000 520 newtons. Coming back over here from B to C, so we have B to C, we have that one, and from D to C or C to D, C to D, we have that one. So we have now the magnitude of the forces on those two members. Let's go and take a look at this joint right here. We can draw this triangle The length of this side is 2 meters, the length of this side is 1.5 meters, 1.5 meters, 2 meters, and using Pythagorean theorem, this is uh, 1.5 squared plus 4, take the square root, we get 2.5, so the hypotenuse here is 2.5 meters. If we now draw the diagram of the forces in, I forgot to write in, the force is acting on this beam right there. If this beam is under tension, it means it's pulling in this direction and it's pulling in this direction. Notice that the force at A here is downward. So here's my force at A, which is 960 newtons in this direction. I need to draw this force, like this. That is the force from A to B and I need to draw this force, and that would be from A to D. And I have the right direction, yes it is. Okay, so now we have a complete uh, triangle. Now we can associate the forces with the lengths. We can say that 960 newtons divided by two meters is equal to AB divided by 2.5, which is equal to AD divided by 1.5, which means that AB is equal to 960 divided by 2 multiplied times 2.5, and AD is equal to 960 divided by 2 and multiplied times 1.5. So 960, that would be 480, 480 times 2.5, we get 1,200 newtons for the member A to B, and 480 times 1.5, we get 720 newtons for the member from A to D. So now we have the AD member, and we have the AB member. AB is 1,200 newtons, so we have AB. And what about CD? 
Ah, CD. Well, that's interesting. Normally, I would expect CD to be equal to to uh, AD, but that's not the case because that's being balanced out by the tension on AB here. So we're good. These are correct numbers. There's only one force left to be calculated, which is from B to D. But notice that we know what F sub D is, and F sub D must be equal to B to D. F sub D must be equal to B to D. Otherwise, this would not be balanced out. So some of the forces in the y direction must add up to zero. So the magnitude of those forces must be equal. That means that BD is equal to FD, which is equal to 3,360 newtons. Now we have all of the forces and all the members, and we have all the directions, we have the tension and the compressions, and we have the support forces. And that's how we solve a truss like that.